Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with Southport in the Premier League and in the Europa League final and that is what today is about. If you missed the last episode, you missed something absolutely ridiculous in the league. I'm not going to go too much into what happened in the last episode because if you did miss it, please go back and watch it. It was actually really, really good and you know what happened if you were there so you know exactly what the connotations are for this match up against Spurs. So I've been looking at how well Spurs have done in their Europa League and their group, they dominated it apart from losing against Sporting. They beat Sarajevo 9-0 and 3-0. They beat Lech Poznan 6-0 and 3-0. They beat Sporting 5-0 as well, but they did lose the opening group game. The thing is, they concede goals in the knockout rounds. They have not played a match where they haven't conceded apart from the second leg against Juve. They conceded one against Lille twice, actually. They conceded two against Lille. They conceded three against Atalanta. They conceded four against Juve. So they are doing... They're, they're leaky defence. They've got a leaky defence. They've also got Miro Butic. If he was still with us, would Spurs be where they currently are? His average rating for the Europa League is an 8.0. 11 games played, 8 goals, 5 assists. He is 100% their danger man. And we know all about him because he was here for 3 seasons. And then we sold him. He's here or actually for 4 seasons technically. Was he? No, because that's the same season. He was here for 3 seasons. And he's been an absolute unit every single season that he's played for us. So 7.03, 7.24, 7.42 average rating across each of those seasons. He's done a pretty good job as well at Spurs. 10 goals in 33 starts with 5 assists. He is going to be a big problem. But do you know what? We've done really well in the Europa League as well. We've only lost one match and that was couple of episodes ago when we played Chelsea and lost 2-1 away from home. We've obviously, in our group, we beat Feyenoord both times, 3-1 and 2-0. We then beat PAOK both times, scoring six goals across the two matches. We beat Osijek 1-0 and then dominated them 0-0. We had about 40 shots but couldn't seem to score a goal. Then into the knockouts, AA Ghent, we beat them, cruised past AA Ghent. Adrian Valkovic scoring the greatest goal of all time in that second leg. Against Roma, which was on camera, we also cruised past Roma, two 2-0 two victories. Against Chelsea, a little bit questionable this one. Obviously, we lose the first leg, but that vital away goal from Damian Tilga was going to be enough until Adrian Valkovic came off the bench and scored his second goal in as many appearances in the Europa League. It spurs then. It is Europa League final time at the Aviva Stadium in the Republic of Ireland. It's going to be big. I just want to win. I just want to win a trophy. We haven't won a proper trophy yet. This could be that proper trophy. Here we go then. Europa League final time. Yes, I've put a suit on, okay? This is genuinely the first time I've ever done this, but I feel like this is such a big occasion for my little Southport side to be in a Europa League final in front of 61,000 people, we could win ourselves our first proper trophy in this save. And it's a big one. It's not like, it's not a League Cup or a Johnson's Paint trophy. This is the Europa League. Not many teams have won this one. So then, the starting lineup for the final. It's going to be Varro in goal. Mercia, Mendes, Hanford and Milosevic will be the back four. Kanate, Weston McKenney and Wang in the middle of the pitch. Damien Tilger on the right-hand side, Marco Corneoli on the left-hand side, and Aurelian Everard as our striker. You'll notice, well, you probably won't actually because I think I'm in the way, that Saulo is on the bench. He is not fit to play at all. For some reason, in the Europa League final, we get a massive, massive subs bench. So basically, anyone who is fit is actually on the subs bench. I don't think we've even filled it up. Also, a name that is on the subs bench is Adrian Valkovic. He is our star player in the Europa League and he's only played twice, but he scored two extremely important goals. He will probably come off the bench at some point because he's like our lucky charm now. Spurs as well. They are starting Miro Butic. He is there on the pitch. That's not good. Last time they played Latoura Martinez scored two extremely late goals. Colo Torre says, tell them the pressure is off. No, I expect to win. Why? I should have just listened to Colo. I should have listened to Colo. I should have listened to Colo. I've got faith. There we go. Right, we fixed it. Kinda. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, Southport. I've put a suit on and everything. Well, I've put the jacket and tie on. That's that's enough. You don't need to see the bottom half. 
Seven minutes on the clock and possibly Southport have themselves a chance. Wang tries to play a through ball, can't manage to do it. And now Spurs with the ball. Verheyen finds Macris on that right-hand side. This is a counter-attack in towards the penalty area. Being forced out wide. Crosses in. Laturo Martinez at the back post makes it 1-0 to Spurs. Seven minutes, 20 seconds on the clock. We now have a mountain to climb. Since the goal, we've had a few shots. We've actually had a decent number of shots. Spurs have also had a few shots themselves. We've got a throw. Milosevic, long throw, goes over every... Have we got a penalty? Have we gone and got ourselves a penalty? We might have a penalty. We do have a penalty. Who is stepping up to take this? It's somebody who's very, very big. I don't know who it is. It's Hanford. Why is Hanford taking penalties? Who said that... I mean, are you good at penalties? Are you actually good at penalties? Ten. What's, what's happened? Where do we... Penalty takers. I mean, we've got... Kanate. Kanate would have been just as good. Or bad. I don't know. Well, we've missed a penalty as well. This is not a good final so far. Oh, great. And now Milosevic is injured. So, uh, Javier Liao is going to come on as a right back. It is all falling apart. It is all falling apart. We've got so far in this competition. All the way to the final. To lose it. And we're not even putting up a fight at the moment, really. We've got three minutes of the first half to play. Canate Mendes, now Weston McKenney, tries to find Corneoli, the Swiss winger, controls it well. He's going to have to get a lot of football next season, I think, because he's real good. He's just not registered for the Premier League. Tilga's going to get on the end of that Weston McKenney ball. Tilga goes for goal, hits it well, well over. That was not the best chance from Damien Tilga. Half time then, we are 1 0 down. We've missed a penalty. Our fullback has gone and picked up an injury, which has forced him to be substituted. It is not going very well. You're getting an angry. You're getting an angry shouting at. Fire everybody up. Hanford's on a 6.2, but that is because of the missed penalty. 1 minute 15 seconds on the clock in the second half. Spurs try and get the ball in, but Mendes intercepts it. Forward to Corneoli. Back to Mendes. What are we doing here? Latura Martinez to Florentino. Macris controls the edge of the area. Goes for goal. Plays it right across the front of the goal. No Spurs players in there to gamble. Maybe make it 2-0. Liao with the throw for us. Wang to Kanate. Everard in on goal. Go on, Everard. He's forced a great save out of Dumas. We win ourselves probably a corner. Potentially. I think it is a corner. It is a corner. The ball is on the spot. Tilga takes the corner towards the back. Liao's there of all players. He is five foot six, I think, at best. McKenney to Kanate. We're going the wrong way. Mick Hanford. He's going to have to get the ball upfield instead. We have another throw. Liao to Everard. Back to Liao. The chance isn't gone. The match is not over. Cross ball. Corneoli's going to get the headed clearance. We've got three in the box. He's been tackled by Wesley and now the counter-attack for Spurs might be on. But Mendes heads it down. Canate, Tilga flicks on. Everard's taken. Aurelian Everard. He's got his 14th goal of the season. We are definitely in this tie. It is 1-1 in the Europa League final. I don't feel so stupid about putting this suit on now. It's time. Corneoli coming off. Valkovic is coming on as a left winger. Wang's not having a good game either. He's going to come off for Tommy Doyle. Doyle wants more football. He's done a reasonable job in the middle of the pitch throughout the Europa League games that he has played. If Valkovic scores now, I want a statue built out of solid gold for Adrian Valkovic. 15 minutes of normal time left on the clock. Mick Hanford with the ball plays it across. Right hand side is Tilga. Liao once again to Tilga. He's going to run forward. I've just realised we've done all of our subs. Tilga keeps going, makes some space for himself, but that effort was not even on target. Not a good finish. Final 10 minutes. Give him a get creative. This is very, very even. Both sides 10 shots apiece. Five on target for Spurs, six on target for us. Three minutes of injury time. Valkovic isn't doing what we wanted him to do. It goes into extra time. Right, I've just asked Colo to do the team talk and he's done a reasonable one. I think we get another substitution to take, but I don't think I want to do it yet. I'm thinking we're going to hold on for the moment. I think, yes, yeah, so Spurs have done their fourth substitution. We've still got another one to go. 98 minutes on the clock. Leal to Tommy Doyle. Long ball towards Everard. Heads the ball across. And Linick, Linick Eduardo, potentially. Macris. Into Butic. No, Miro, do not be doing this. I don't want to see an assist or anything from Miro Butic, okay? The only thing I want to see from him is conceding an own goal and a red card. Varro to Hanford, who's since his uh, cock-up at the penalty in the first half, 
he's actually got back into this game and he's he's playing all right. I think he's on a 6.5. Valkovic has the ball in a Europa League final, passing between Weston McKenney. Valkovic gets the ball back. McKenney again. Two runners on that left-hand side. Mercia is one. Valkovic has got the space if you want to use him. He's crossed it in. Tilga's there. Doyle is there, edge of the area, trying to make some space. He's going to try and weave his way across. It's Everard. Aurelian Everard in the 100th minute in the Europa League final has put us in front. Do we shut up shop? Do we shut up shop or do we just keep going? I'm not, I, I'm genuinely very, very nervous right now. Tilga with a corner, whips it in towards the back post. Dumas comes out, claims that corner. So I think there's two minutes left to play of the first half of injury time. Kicks it long over the halfway line. Pizarro's going to get there first for Spurs. Chests it down, runs towards goal. Doyle doesn't get there. Macris is there and Macris has made it 2-2. The elation of the Aurelian Everard goal is literally just nullified instantly by Spurs going up the other end and equalising. Half time in extra time, and my substitutions have been garbage. So garbage, in fact, Tommy Doyle is coming off because he's on a 6.2. We don't have enough options on the bench either. We could... We could do Barriero as a Mazala. I think that's probably what we're going to go for. That's all we can do. I mean, bringing off Tommy Doyle is probably a bad thing because of his penalties at 13, but he's playing so badly, I can't imagine he's going to score it anyway. Second half of injury time is, or extra time, sorry, it's just flying by. It is absolutely disappearing. We've got seconds left to play. It is going to be a penalty shootout. This is not how we wanted to decide the Europa League final, particularly as all of our penalty takers are 10s, and one of them's already missed a penalty today. Starting with Alsane Canate then. The French Ivorian defensive midfielder steps up. It's into the back of the net. Good start from Canate. Latura Martinez versus Varro. Come on, Varro. Come on, Varro. You love penalty saves. You love to save penalties. We've seen it throughout the last few seasons. He doesn't save Martinez's penalty, though. Weston McKenney. He's nearly 32, and he's our oldest man in our regular playing squad at the very least. Steps up against Dumas and puts it into the bottom corner. It's 2-1. Come on, Miro. Miro Butic, put this into space. Put this into space. Varro versus Butic. Varro goes the right way. Butic hits the post. Suck it, Miro Butic. You made the wrong decision. Okay, you made the wrong de decision. You should have stayed here. You could have been a legend. You could have been a hero. Everard steps up, you bloody clown. After that speech I just gave about Butic. Well, it's 2-2. We still kind of have the advantage at the moment. Ayor steps up to take the penalty into the bottom corner. It is 2-2 now. That's, that's how goals work. It's Javier Leal, the Guatemalan, the only Guatemalan to ever play in a Europa League final, I assume. Steps up right-footed into the opposite corner from the goalkeeper. We are 3-2 up. Pizarro now, who made their equalising goal shortly after Everard scored ours. Pizarro steps up. Vero goes the right way, but doesn't manage to get the ball. Sebastian Mendes. Come on. Come on, Sebastian. Do your job. Dumas versus Mendes. Steps up. It's it's an awful penalty. It's not what we wanted to see. That is not what we wanted to see. This could win the Europa League. This penalty could win the Europa League. Taylor versus Varro. Varro has to save this or Taylor has to miss. Otherwise, the Europa League is going to Spurs. And I've put this suit and tie on for absolutely nothing. Come on, Varro. Come on, Varro. Make yourself a hero. He doesn't make himself a hero. Europa League final. Europa League final. How? I mean, fair play that we got there. But we should have won that. We deserve to win that. We missed a penalty in open play in normal time. Sorry. We went 2-1 up in injury time, in extra time. And then straight away, Macris equalised for Spurs. That's harsh. That is real, real harsh. Some players on our team as well were absolutely shocking. Wang on a 6.3. Tommy Doyle getting a 6.2 as well. Oh, I'm genuinely heartbroken. I'm genuinely heartbroken right now. Colo Tori says, appreciate their efforts. I will I will just nod and agree. We really shouldn't have even been in that final, should we? We had such a great run. Next year, we're in the Champions League. We'll probably get knocked out in the group stages and maybe next year we'll win the Europa League instead. I guess I'll go take this suit off then, shall I? Penalties. A penalty shootout in the final. Um, I, I genuinely could not believe that is how it was decided. A penalty shootout in the final of the Europa League. At least Miro Butic didn't score. Tottenham lift Euro Cup. We know, we know we were the better side 
probably. Sebastian Mendes is the one who obviously missed the decisive penalty. He is. Uh, he, he will step up and take penalties again, apparently. What I am realising is I probably need to hire some decent penalty takers because I don't have a huge amount in my entire squad and most of the ones that I do have don't play too often. Euro Cup review. I'm annoyed that we are not the biggest overachievers because surely we were not expected to get that far. Instead, FH from Iceland are the biggest overachievers. What did they do? They got to the first knockout round. Oh, fair enough. That's actually not too bad. Well then, as I guess it is the end of the season, we are going to have to go forward and go and see the end of season awards. Obviously, the Premier Division, where we kind of did all right. I say kind of. We finished fourth. We finished fourth. We did amazing. Last episode, if you missed it, you missed something special. But yeah, we finished fourth place in the end. Thanks to Brighton. Basically, thanks to Brighton, we finished fourth. But we are there. We're going to go forward to the end of season awards and have a little bit of a roundup. Players inducted into the overall best 11 and Damien Tilger is the pick of players. So he ends up on that right hand side. Tommy Doyle, Varro and Liao all making it in there as well. Varro actually on to the starting. Javier Liao not. He's on the bench and I assume uh, Tommy Doyle as well because he's not one of those three. Also on to the bench. It's still quite funny to see some of the names in this overall best 11 where you have Big Dave who retired a long, long time ago, but he's still arguably one of our best players, apparently, which I feel like is very, very strange. Raul Correa as well, still on there. He's still a scout for us. He's still not very good. And the main man, Big Bartosz Sibolski, who, since leaving us, has actually gone on a little bit of a tour, hasn't he? No, he hasn't. He, so we saw him to Krakowia. He spent two seasons there. He's now signed for Piast for £91,000. He's still getting goals, isn't he? Certainly not the 35 that he did score for us, though. Where are they now? Do we really care where they are? Not really. Godwin Asia, he's, uh, he's still playing football, which is always handy for him. He's been robbed. He has been robbed. Adrian Valkovic has been robbed. I will show you the actual goal of the season. It is not Deli Ali versus Aston Villa. Player of the season is Damien Tilwa, Kanate Mendes. Mendes in third. I feel like that's like a don't worry, pat on the head kind of thing. You missed a penalty in the Europa League final, but we still love you. Mercia signing of the season, Tilga, young player of the season at 24. That seems a little bit old to be the young player of the season, but anyway, he's gone and won that one. The uh, team of the season is the team of the season. You know what that team is. Some stats as well. Tilga basically dominates pretty much everything there, doesn't he? Most goals with 17, highest average rating 7.39, 14 assists as well. Without Damien Tilga, we would be down 31 goals. He was involved in 31 goals. That's ridiculous. Varro with the best pass completion. Tilga, five man of the match award as well. Mendes loves the yellow card. Leal, McKenney, and Hanford all picking up a solitary red each. So this is the second place goal of the season that Deli Ali scored. Um, we'll see the actual first place goal of the season shortly afterwards. But this is second place. It is definitely second place. There is no way this is better than Valkovic. It's not better than Valkovic. It was a decent finish though. This is goal of the season by Adrian Valkovic in the 4-1 victory against Ghent. Yes, he was playing as a left back. Yes, he's not very good. But when your left back, who's not very good, does that, that's goal of the season. I literally get goosebumps when that went in. Ran over. Anyway, season review. We've done really well. I mean, this is this is definitely not right. We didn't finish 15th. We didn't finish 15th. We finished 4th, but we'll ignore it. We will ignore that. Basically, we were expected to finish top half and finish fourth. That's pretty much the story of it. And we got to the final of the Europa League and lost again on penalties. Next season then, what do they want us to do? They want us to get to the group stages of the Champions League, which we are probably not far away from anyway. And that's about it. Fair enough. Our board is really like non-expectant. It's great. Right, team, team, mid-table. So what we're going to go for? Good, everyone. We finished fourth, Europa League final, next season, mid-table. That's what we're going to go for. Training camp, right, we got to pick somewhere where we have some players from that nationality. We could go to Queensland, actually. Yeah, we're going to go to, go to Queensland because we've got Brisbane Raw, which I don't know whether that's near Queensland or not. It's, it's a big country, but we've not used them and we don't have any Australians, so maybe we'll get one soon. Oh, apparently Mark Overmars was trying to offer a contract to this man. Um, I thought he might be all right. I don't know whether he will. He'll never get. He'll never play even if we do sign him. But you know, he might be all right. Europa League squad of the season: Wang and Everard. Wang and Everard, and that's it. We got to the final, and you put three Chelsea players in there and two Southport players. 
We got to the final game, come on. Oh, 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 what is this? What's going on? The board have announced plans to enlarge the stadium. So this is what we were talking about earlier, wasn't it? I see earlier, a few episodes ago. The stadium is going to be made bigger by 7,000 seats. It's going to take only until October, actually. That's not too bad. And they've already started, apparently. They told us on the 30th, it's already started. Cool. And they're also going to do our youth and training facilities. That is good to know as well. A bit more time has passed. It's now the 3rd of June. The transfer window opened in about a week and a half. So uh, we are very close to actually basically bringing in some new players. We've got some new sponsorship deals. A telecommunications company is giving us a five-year deal. I don't know whether that's a shirt sponsorship deal or not. But there's a global audience strengthening Southport's brand. That's good to know. We're becoming a much bigger club outside of England. That's or I say England. Outside of Merseyside, I assume. Everything else obviously has gone up. Competition money's gone up by a big number because of the Europa League final. Shirt sales, Wang, Deli Ali, Everard, Tilger, and Sebastian Millet is up there in fifth. That's that's good to know. For some reason, for some reason we've lost our, our scouting packages. We've lost our scouting packages, so we'll put those back on. I don't know why they've gone. Maybe we just spent all the money from last season. Oh, and apparently Jean Moutinho's joined as our under 18 assistant manager. Fair enough. I mean, he's he's reasonable in terms of personality and tactical style. He does fit. As as an assistant manager, he's not great, is he? Well, that is going to do it then for season 11 of Football Manager with Southport. It has been a long, long season. It has been a very good season. Arguably, this has been probably one of the most enjoyable seasons, which is good. After a couple of years ago, where I kind of started to fall out of love with the side, I guess... I think I'm starting to fall back into love with this Southport team and hopefully over the summer with the new additions, we only go from strength to strength. We've got Champions League football to look forward to next season. Maybe we can do another little title run at the start of next season as well. It's either going to be a great season next year or it's going to be an indifferent season where we basically just mid, not mid table, but we kind of finish just inside of Europe. We finish maybe fourth, fifth, sixth, something like that. We get knocked out in all the cups. Or we do what we did this season and we go all the way to a final and lose on penalties. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like. If you are new here and you want to see more and you want to see season 12, I think it's 12, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell as well. So when the next episode comes out, you'll be notified. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.